Well, hello and welcome to today's Bible reading and devotional. This is for Sunday, January 21st, 2024. We'll be starting in John chapter 9 momentarily. Uh, if you want to hit that subscribe bar and then the notification bell when it comes up and comment on these videos, like these videos, share these videos, you know the drill. And uh, John chapter 9 is where we will be starting with the 30 days with Jesus generated by Logos. And no, I get no compensation or any kind of endorsements. It just happens to be the software that I use along with BibleSoft, which you'll see here in a minute when the text comes up uh, on the screen share. And so there is the text, John chapter 9. We're looking at the man born blind today. And this is not one of the better chapter breaks. It's, it's not a bad chapter break. If you're new to the broadcast, I kind of take issue with some of the chapter breaks. But here in uh, chapter 9, verse 1 of John, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither this man uh, nor, uh, nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, granted, everybody sins, and sometimes sin can lead to some pretty serious consequences. Uh, here on earth. Uh, obviously, if you don't repent of sin, you don't uh, get to spend eternity with God, you would be sent uh, to hell. Uh, actually, you send yourself, but that did be another discussion for another time. But here's the thing. Just because someone has a physical ailment does not necessarily mean they sinned. This man was born blind. What sin did he commit? Well, obviously, he didn't commit any sin to cause his blindness. Now, uh, when sin can uh, cause long-term consequences, for instance, if this man had been abusing uh, certain drugs uh, that could maybe cause blindness or was uh, doing foolish things, which maybe wouldn't be sin, like looking up at an eclipse without proper protection, that supposedly can fry your eyes. I've never done it, but supposedly it can. Okay, so it causes blindness, but uh, that wasn't because of sin. That was just because of a foolish choice that got made. So there are lots of reasons why it is people uh, have to deal with things like this man dealing with blindness or deal with other injuries is because we do foolish things. And sometimes, yes, we, we do sin, which can lead uh, to a problem like blindness or getting hurt. So when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and Jesus anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had uh, seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, Yeah, this, this is he. Others said, eh, He's like him. He, but he said, I am he. Therefore, they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes, and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and I received sight. And they said to him, Where is he? And he said, I don't know. So, now here's something we have to understand. Jesus made the concoction with the spat in the ground, made the, the mud, put it on his eyes, said, okay, go wash in the pool of silence. Suppose the guy said, nah, I'm just going to stay here in my blindness. Or suppose uh, he said, yeah, I'll do it, but then got halfway then said, what am I doing this for? Nah, I don't want to do it. In other words, if he hadn't have obeyed Jesus, what would have happened with his, with his healing? Uh, nothing. Nothing. He had to obey. He had to do what he was instructed. So what does that tell us today? Yeah, we have to obey and do what we're instructed to do. In Acts 2.38, for instance, they asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? And the answer was, repent and be baptized, each of you in the name of Jesus Christ. So if someone says, oh, no, you know, works have nothing to do with salvation. Uh, no. So works of obedience. You're not, now, we're not talking works of merit. He just simply did what he was told to do. 
And no, don't I do not teach a, a doctrine or a salvation by works. We're saved by the grace of God, but we have to do what God told us to do uh, uh, when he told us to do it, how and why and, and all that sort of thing. We have to do uh, what God told. We have to repent of sin. Uh, I've heard a, a Baptist preacher, I'm not going to say his name, but he is pretty well known, uh, say, well, no, you don't not have to repent. That's a work salvation. Well, He's at odds with Peter, because Peter said, you have to repent. Okay, verse 13. They brought him who, they try that again. They brought him who formerly was blind to the Pharisees. Now, it was a Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. And here we go again. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he received his sight. And he said, he put a clay, he put clay on my eyes. I washed, I see. Now, this is. I take this to be like those interrogations you see in the old movies where, you know, dark room, single light hanging overhead. Okay, one more time from the top. Okay. Or doing the cheesy German accent. Okay, ways of making you talk. I mean, that's all they want. And they've got an agenda. They know what they want to hear, but he's not telling them what they want to hear. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such things? And there was a division among them. Then, he, then uh, rather, they said to the blind man again, what do you say about him because he opened your eyes? He said, no, he is a prophet. He's saying Jesus is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received a sight until they called the parents of him who had received sight. And they asked him, asked them, saying, is this your son? who you say was born blind. How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age. Ask him, uh, ask him for he will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed, had already agreed that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. And therefore, his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. Okay, he's of age. Go ask him. We're not going to risk getting disfellowshipped or excommunicated or whatever term your religious faith body uses. They were not going to take that chance. So they throw their son under the bus. Well, wait a minute. They didn't have buses then. Okay, so they throw him under the chariot or under the wagon. Because they're going to get, basically they're disowning them, or at least distancing themselves from them if they're not disowning them, because of the healing and it taking place on the Sabbath, and they don't want to get caught up in all of the uh, blowback that's coming, obviously from the priestly class. And remember, here we're talking when they start talking Jews, they're more than likely talking the Jewish leaders, not the rank and file Jews. Verse twenty-four. So they again called the man who was born blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answers the man who was cured, said, uh, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know that though I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered and said, I told you already. And you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples. So why, why are we doing going through this? I already answered your questions. Uh, hmm, you maybe want to become his disciple, which of course would set them off. Then they reviled him and said, you are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. And we know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, why is this a marvelous, why? This is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from. Yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been unheard of, uh, unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, You are completely born in sins, and, you are, te and are you teaching us? And they cast him out. So they're telling them, well, you know, you what? How dare you uh, 
tell us or teach us Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees. Uh, we're the ones who've uh, got the degrees here. We're the ones who've got the alphabet soup after our names. We're the ones who have gone to college and university and done this and done that. You haven't. Sound familiar? Uh, a lot of times the layman will get that response when they not just talk to clergy, but they talk to doctors and lawyers and other people and ask too many questions, I have found. Uh, they, they'll get a response similar to what this man got. Verse 35, Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when uh, he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking to you. Hey, I'm standing right in front of you. You're looking at him, basically. Then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Now notice Jesus is accepting worship. He's not telling him, no, nah, don't do that. Stand up. Hey, I'm just a man like you. No, he's accepting worship. It tells you Jesus is deity uh, in human form. And Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world that those who do not see may see, and those who do not, or rather, and those who see may be made blind. And some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? I picture them being very smug when they said that. Hey, uh, Jesus, uh, what about us? Uh, are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remains. So some of the Pharisees who heard Jesus want to know, Okay, are we blind also? And he said, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. If they should know better. They're the ones who know the law. They know the prophecies. They know it inside and out. But they're refusing to see. And that's what uh, uh, Jesus is trying to get them to understand. Yeah, they... If you would open your mind, open your eyes, you would uh, you wouldn't have uh, you, you would have no sin. You would have uh, good spiritual insights, but they're not going to do it. This is where we need to be open to teaching. This is why we need to be open to. It. We don't want to become like a Pharisee or a Sadducee that deny the the uh, uh, anything after the Pentateuch, anything after uh, Deuteronomy and some other things. But we don't want to be like them. We don't want to have our sin remain. We want to have them forgiven. We want to have them put behind us. That is where the plan of salvation comes in. So that's going to wrap it up for today. So we will close out by going to God in prayer. I hope you did find a, or you will find a, an assembly of saints that you can gather with. I don't know what time of the day it is you're watching this, uh, or uh, what the customs are as far as the church meeting where you are. But I hope you can find a place where the Bible is proclaimed. It is respected as the Word of God. So let's go to God in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for the uh, day that, that we can gather with other Christians and be able to study your Word and hear a, a lesson from it. We want to pray, Lord, for church assemblies everywhere to have good, solid attendance this week. We pray for your truth to be proclaimed and for the hearers to apply the lessons as they leave, we pray, Lord, for ministers and elders and deacons who will take it seriously to, to help the church to expand the borders of the kingdom to help us all to grow. Forgive us, Lord, where we sin, where we fail you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you for uh, joining me. We uh, I hope you can find a place. If you need help finding a place where you can assemble with Christians, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. Or you can email me, I almost forgot to put it up there, uh, with questions about finding a congregation or just if you have a Bible question about a Bible topic or a uh, verse, you can send it to me and I'll get a lesson on it as quick as I can. So that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in the next video. I'm done and I am out.